Welcome back players, it's Villains Too Stupid To Win Episode 7. I've just launched channel memberships, so if you'd like access to content voting and other perks, please consider hitting that join button. But now, we've got another bad guy who defeats himself by jerking around his own joystick. It's M. Bison, from Street Fighter The Movie. Loosely based on Street Fighter 2, it's the movie we never asked for, padded with token characters we never cared about, forced into roles where they don't belong. But don't worry, there's a few better known characters in there doing half-assed versions of our favourite fighting moves. Though that pales in comparison to the horrendous treatment of Dalsim. The guy is unrecognisable until the very end, when he suddenly gets a bald head, a possible fire death and an elephant sound effect. <laughs> But on to the final level, it's Gaul taking on Bison, as if we didn't see enough of that in our youth. Quick! Change the channel! The filmmakers addressing the lack of narrative substance in the source material, seemingly by throwing their script in the air and shotgun blasting it with video game references. Capcom apparently using some cheat codes from Super Mario Brothers, if only they'd taken enough influence to include a few street fights. Holding up this little junket is a clammy Van Damme in the middle of a raging cocaine addiction, playing Guile, an all-American Belgian. I'm not going home. And Raul Julia in his ironic swan song as M. Bison. Bison got his start as a petty drug lord with delusions of grandeur, but nowadays he abuses his criminal organization as a platform to play a camp wannabe Hitler and satisfy his red leather kink. Point 1. A half-baked overarching plan heavily reliant on other half-baked plans. Like most power-hungry megalomaniacs, Bison won't settle for anything less than total world domination. Until the very planet is in the loving grip of the Pax Bisonica. But it's a prospect that seems extremely unlikely, since his overarching goal is a Russian nesting doll of interdependent half-baked schemes. Actually, half-baked might be too complimentary. At best, he's gotten a few of the wrong ingredients out of the pantry and is now frittering between staring at the back of the fridge and checking if anything's appeared in his empty bank account. But for me... It was Tuesday. Bison intends to use a race of super soldiers and a horde of weaponry to take over the world, ruling the population from a capital called Bisonopolis. And that basic outline is about as far as Bison gets, enjoying the buzz of his big ideas while neglecting the finer details. The food court should be larger. All the big franchises will want in. Bison chooses to focus on his super soldier program at a time when there are far more pressing matters at hand. The project is in its infancy and couldn't possibly assist them in the coming battle. Quite the opposite in fact. A beast born of my own genius! Blanca seems to be completely uncontrollable and it's doubtful things would have been better if they managed to complete his programming. His partially retained humanity is probably the only thing stopping him from slaughtering everyone. And I think Bison expects these guys to be able to operate weaponry. Because yeah, I get it. No matter how strong or ruthless these beasts might be, they're still going to be shredded by basic firearms. But is there any scenario in which these brutes could fire a gun with accuracy? The very traits you've endowed this creature with does not lend itself to conventional soldiering. Have any of you ever seen this creature? It would have been far cheaper, less bothersome, and probably more effective to just rack up a herd of cattle and send them charging towards your enemies. As for the weapons, Bison organizes a backwater weapons expo to get the goods. Perhaps adequate for tooling up for a small scale border dispute. Not so great for assisting in the creation of a force to dominate the world. So it's not surprising the security of this event is severely lacking. But the kicker, Bison doesn't even have the money to pay for this stuff yet, relying on everyone to buy into his bullshit as much as he does. Five British pounds. Well, that is the exchange rate the Bank of England will set once I've kidnapped their queen. Did he forget that everything hinges on this? Next time you mind, Lise, tell to bring back pizza. And here I was thinking any new global power worth its salt would want to have its own central bank. I doubt this guy has enough financial nous to be a bank teller, let alone manage a state. 
But finally, we get to the last outer layer of this diabolical onion. A random, extraneous plan to kidnap a bunch of Ain workers and ransom them for 20 billion dollars. His delusions about the value of his own currency apparently put on hold. He doesn't even specify exactly what he needs this money for. Most likely, he wants to start building Bisonopolis, a pointless vanity project which does nothing to further his more immediate goals. But the illogical nature of this scheme isn't even its most disastrous flaw. Point 2. Bison is an overconfident, self-sabotaging egotist who prematurely exposes himself to the world. So with Bison's numerous plans at varying low levels of completion, naturally this is the perfect time to further expose himself to the wrath of the world with this pointless Ayn kidnapping scheme. Long before he is ready to take on a sizable force, let alone a globally backed one, let alone a force led by Guile. It would have been far more canny to develop his plans in secret, keeping the lowest possible profile then strike against his enemies without warning. He obviously had a bit of a rep already, but now he's thrown down the gauntlet and forced his enemies hand. You must be patient and allow yourself sufficient time. Gull's now on his way to tear the entire house of cards down and the spineless Aeon bureaucrats who were willing to capitulate won't be able to stop him. Also worth noting those same suits end up ghosting Bison on the payment anyway. Unsurprisingly the real reason for Bison's rudderless Aeon kidnapping scheme appears to be a bit of shallow attention seeking, reveling in his newfound reach. He then further compromises his operation in a desperate attempt to keep the spotlight on him. I know you like to look at yourself on television, you sick son of a bitch. So look at this. Gull successfully baits Bison into a broadcasted confrontation. You will choke on those words, Guile. Anytime, dickhead. Allowing them to narrow down the location of his base. Sure, he delivers a few more specifics about his ransom demands as well. You have three days. If my 20 billion dollars are not delivered by then, the hostages will die. But you could have accomplished that with an email. He also sees this as an opportunity to further his foolish obsession with taking on Gaul man to man. Like that would work out. Why do you address a fellow warrior with such disrespect? And I'm not sure how a fully televised admission of Bison's guilt was meant to transfer the blame onto Gaul, so there's that. And the world will hold you responsible. Later on, Bison's overconfidence causes him to underestimate Chun Li straight after she admitted to being a dangerous, vengeful assassin. I studied the martial arts of three continents so that one day I could meet you. Avenge my father. You are harmless. All the more risky considering that under pressure and without the technology of his dom outfit, Bison can't put up much of a fight. Bison then gets all snarky with Sagat for failing to foresee Gaul's plan. His death was designed to ingratiate his spies with you. I guess you didn't see that, did you? Obviously projecting a bit and covering for his own lack of insight. He's the one who let a whole bunch of randos walk into his base after their weapons expo was severely compromised. But in terms of the issues around here, a few infiltrators are the least of his worries. Point 3. Bison is a poor leader surrounded by disloyal, incompetent troops and an even worse setup. Bison makes up for his obvious lack of leadership skills by attempting to inspire loyalty through fear alone. But despite being a psychopathic, sadistic killer with a raging god complex, Bison only manages to pull off the intimidation factor of a fine leather handbag. Uh -huh. Surrounding himself with people who display little in the way of personal loyalty, most are probably just looking to ride the Bison gravy train. You got paid? There's a small group of scientists who are supposedly loyal, but besides that, Bison's biggest proponent would have to be Zangief, a hopeless idiot who appears to have a prominent role in Bison's security team. But even he will turn on you the moment he finds out he's not one of the good guys. General Bison! He's a bad guy! Sagat and his troops have also been brought into the fold despite the fact he thinks Bison is such a bad joke he already tried to roll him. You raving lunatic! 
but Bison's worst hire has to be Dalsum, a benevolent scientist he enslaved to carry out the mind reprogramming required for a super soldier. My science twisted to serve perversion instead of peace. This guy is principled and courageous, openly hostile to the whole agenda and thrown shade straight in Bison's face. Because unlike you, he's not psychotic. Probably the worst person you want hanging around this operation. And once the program was initiated, did we really need this rebel here to check that a video was still playing? As for Bison's generic grunts, well, they're the worst of the worst. Mucking around having Smoko when the base is meant to be on high alert. Once under a full A in assault and with plenty of good guy fodder to plow through, they managed to shoot literally no one at all. These bowling pins make stormtroopers seem like expert marksmen. Okay. And it doesn't help that in the middle of a firefight, Bison is redirecting them to shoot the hostages for no apparent reason other than to sting his enemies. SHOOT THE HOSTAGES! Apparently that's more important than actually killing them. But all of this could have probably been avoided if it weren't for the shoddy infrastructure of this crusty layer. Bison's base is below a conspicuous complex of ancient ruins. Wait, hang on, these dollar store stormtroopers are just some poor lost tourists. That explains everything. They've got cameras and a range of defenses along the river, but nothing above the base itself, let alone an adequate number of guards. Just make your way to the nearest sewer grate and you're in. Even when Bison manages to snag a few of our good guys, it's not much of a deal. It's almost disrespectful to assume these rusty old shackles will be enough to secure these absolute units, though their newer looking restraints aren't up to task either. But there is some decent kit around here in the form of Bison's electromagnetic technologies. It's possible it's possible these devices only work within the specialized environment of Bison's control room, but surely there were other military applications and profit opportunities he could have used to advance his empire. Instead, he misuses it, lording over his noob subjects from his sweet gaming chair and recklessly flying around in a confined space during his long anticipated scuffle with Guile. Your ass is six months overdue. And it's mine. At this point, I would normally criticize the villain for agreeing to a one-on-one. -on -one. But considering the hit rate of these guys, yeah, you might as well just send them away. So predictably, Bison ends up being KO'd in round two, after Guile Invisible throws him into a big screen of CRT monitors. In a way, defeated by his own vanity. Game over! So with Bison down and out, and with his forces subdued, there's nothing left for our heroes to do except celebrate the destruction of an ancient archaeological wonder. Congratulations! But don't throw your popcorn at the screen just yet. There's an uncalled for end credit scene teasing the return of Bison. Despite everyone involved being well aware, the iconic Raoul wasn't doing so well. And it would be a hard ask for anyone else to fill those jackboots. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 20 billion bison dollars and be sure to oh, you can that like button.